Good morning. If some of you are waiting a little longer, I apologize. I put out the message that I was going to start, but I was still in my room. Didn't realize there was so much cloud. But it's beautiful to see the sun again today. And actually, uh, the gospel passages around here someplace. Uh, if we go down here to the shore, when it's heading to Capernaum for sure, over there on the other side, across the lake. But it says the boats went about four miles. And it says that the boats, uh, other boats came from the direction of Tiberius, which we see down there. That's the modern Tiberius. So the ancient Tiberius is below that another half a mile and or less. And so uh, who knows exactly where the multiplication of the loaves was or if there's confusion. There's another detail is that the name Tiberius is a later name for the lake because it's probably not called Tiberius at the time of Jesus yet, given that Herod Antipas made Tiberius the capital of his territory in Galilee before it was Sepphoris, which is way over there in the direction of Nazareth, close to Nazareth. So, then the first name would have been given to the town, Tiberius is the first naming of Tiberius here. Um, Herod Antipas named it after the emperor to ingratiate himself with the emperor, to maintain his grace with the emperor. And so eventually then when people, when Tiberius would become famous, would significant, would become a dominant identifier of this area, then it's understandable that the lake would be called Lake Tiberius. <laughs> because it was at the city of Tiberius. That makes sense, you know. So in John's Gospel, which is written later, uh, then the nomenclature would obviously correspond to what the people used most at the time or what that was familiar to them also depending on the audience that was primarily the recipient of the, the gospel. Because it obviously had a concrete author and directing to concrete communities telling the story of Jesus to concrete communities. And then we have, in the first reading, we have the, the story of Stephen, who, al who already showed up as the first deacon, so somebody of prominence. And his name, Stephen Stephanos, is a Greek word, a Greek name. And it means, it's a word actually, first of all, it's a crown. And so he received the crown of martyrdom. His name was considered in that sense then, in hindsight, prophetic. So Stephen today is, is the, in, in the reading at that moment then, it's after he's a deacon, he's very active. It looks like there's a very active Greek-speaking community. You know, it's interesting how all that was because there's a whole historical context there. After Alexander the Great conquers toward the east, then Greek becomes the dominant language. And in the centuries just before Christ, we have the translation of the Bible into Greek in Alexandria in Egypt. So there was the, the lingua franca, the, 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 uh, 
the vernacular for uh, all the Eastern Mediterranean. It's the language, the official language for all the politics of during that Greek period, and then it became very established as the Greeks had very high culture. Then that language remained. And that's also why the Gospels were written in Greek, because that's what the people understood. These geese are almost as big as their parents now. Looks like there's three adults here. Yes, because the five are over there, which were once little chicks. And we have these two big ones here, and then we have another one over here. And imagine the relationships aren't always friendly. And we had that reading a while ago about the communities, you know, being one mind and one heart in the beginning in Jerusalem. But also division comes up and it's ethnic, ethnically based. The Greek widows weren't getting a fair share and therefore the need to do something about it. So... That's how then the deacons were instituted in the midst of that crisis, which must have been pretty severe, intense, passionate. I prefer not to say anything, but and not to show it to you, but look at all the garbage here. It's amazing how how people are so careless about other people. What a pity. We won't let that note dominate our conversation. And we'll pray and work and advocate that education develops. And people can... It's amazing how this embankment of shells keeps moving in the pressure of the water, the waves. And then this Greek community seems to be very active, proselytizing, uh, teaching, there are many miracles, and this obviously then rouses the envy and the action of others. And so they're the target of, of assault. There's also a, a, a Hebrew-speaking or Aramaic-speaking community. So they, there are two different parts in the community, ethnically, linguistically. And that's something the church has had to deal with always through the centuries. I know there were even issues in the United States with the, with the Irish element in the church and then the German element in the church. So it's a very human thing. It takes charity and wisdom and prudence to address and resolve any issues. When there's injustice, there can't be peace. You cannot have peace where there's injustice, where there isn't fairness. And that's a great, a great test of all of our communities, of every family, of every couple, of every fr all friends, siblings. Justice lies at the at the root of of peace. Another disturber of peace, then, obviously, is jealousy and envy. That others do well.
make some people unhappy and they, they lose their interior peace. And they become agitated and and rouse up and these are things that happen still today obviously we're human beings and then to be wise how to cope with this type of upset and subsequent aggressive behavior and I tie this in with the, one of the, the the themes of the gospel reading and Jesus asked them, well, why, why are you looking for me? Are you looking just for the bread? Or for power? Or, for, or are you looking for the, the lasting values? Peace in our hearts depends a lot on the ability to set our goals on the lasting realities. What a pity to set our goals on fame, on applause from others. It's so fleeting, people forget us so easily. Nobody knows the names of all the people who built this town of Migdal 2,000 years ago, who were the strongest soldiers in the battles with the Romans who were the richest people. One or two names are remembered, especially Mary of Magdala, remembered as the first witness of the risen Lord. But most of our names vanish from history. So why lose our nerves over a slight or a, a, a harsh word or a reaction or a lack of appreciation or somebody didn't notice me, overlooked me. What am I looking for? Am I looking for that kind of stuff? Am I looking for clothes nicer than Solomon's that won't even match a flower's beauty? And that moth will destroy or am I looking for the unfolding of God's plan in our lives, in the lives of others? If I see the unfolding of God's plan in the lives of others, then I will support that project that God has with the other. And I will be an ardent, I will stand by that plan. I will uh, give it all the, the wind and its sails I can. I won't be overwhelmed by envy, by jealousy, by fear of being overshadowed by others. I'll be happy when they thrive, when they are blessed. What am I looking for? Am I just looking for myself, for my goals? And so we see then the people are very angry with Stephen. They want to kill him. Imagine killing somebody that's... Good morning, buongiorno. Grazie a Dio. Avete una festa, festa di Pasqua. Algorone. Faccio qui un po' il live stream di tutta la mattina con il, il sorge del sole. When people get really riled up, they're able to bring in false witnesses. Imagine what they're, how they're compensated, with what resources. The conniving, the intriguing, it still goes on today in politics at all levels, from the family to international. 
and yet God's plan is going to be worked out also through that. So when we see these things, we don't need to get superficially upset over them and protest. We need to pray that in all of the troubles of families and communities and countries that God's plan will be worked out. That the flowers of the seeds he sows will blossom and bear fruit. I just noticed yesterday something very special that's really developing very well here. Look at this. Aloe vera plants. And the sap of these plants is very beneficial to health, to heal wounds and all kinds of things. Aloe vera. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. That's why we need God's law as well. Not to lie, to, not to cheat. Those limits that we tend to go there to covet. Blessed are those who follow the law of the Lord, Psalm 119. People, I wish you a very good day. Check out what you're seeking, seeking the things above or seeking the things of the earth. We have to serve people in all the things they need for life here. Those are practical aspects of charity. But we can also be very clever about the limitations of these things. And not fight over them with our brothers and sisters. God bless you. See you later, alligators.